So this solar panel here is probably the best one I've ever built. It's a monocrystalline panel. Let's take a look at it. What's going on guys? How's it going? This is my first monocrystalline homemade solar panel and I just recently put this one together and I even put a little aluminum frame around it with some scrap pieces of aluminum. I'm using monocrystalline cells. They're 2.8 watts each and there's 24 cells inside of this panel here. These cells here are smaller than the full size 6x6 so you can squeeze more in between your glass. They're 2.8 watts. We have here about a 65 watt panel. Panel and it puts out about 12 volts. The voltage, we don't need to worry about that because we can boost it or we can reduce the voltage to charge whatever we want. So let's build a monocrystalline homemade solar panel. Brand new solar cells. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're going to tap the top. So we're going to cut our tabbing wire and we're going to make sure that it's double the size of the cell. There, we'll give it a little extra. There's our tabbing line. So we'll just cut a couple strips. What I like to do is flatten the wire. I showed in my last video the dabbing of the solder. Well, I've discovered a better way of doing this without messing up the face of the cell. Instead of touching the iron and the solder to the cell, which leaves that spot of resin, tin the iron away from the cell and then just drop the solder on. It's going to take a little more time, but. Oh my God. And touch the iron, not over the cell. It's kind of wiping on like paint. Yeah, as you can see, the cell is cleaner than if you do it the other way. This one here, I dabbed the old way. You can see all the resin. So now, I just touch it. I'm gonna put the tabbing wire to the end. Backside, I don't worry about resin. These cells here, you don't have to cut your tabbing wire so long. It's different lengths for joining them. So we're going to do across the whole face of this one, right to there, and then we only have to go to here. So you can save a little bit of wire. This one. So we're going to string a row now. We have a cell here that has double tabbing wire on it. This one has tabbed front and back. So this is our top leads. These are the bottom. So we're going to take one of our cells here that we have tabbed on the bottom. I'm going to slide that under and join it. So what we can do is start stringing now. So stringing means just soldering them all together in a series circuit. Prep this one. Let's just lay cell on top. We want to have our clearance so that our tabbing wires don't go past and touch this one. Just want to go to about there. We can just dab it for a second until it locks on. Do the same thing over here. There. So now we have a full row of cells and we can just move this over. I want to move them carefully. Do is I have just have this random foam here. Your cells just slide them along if you don't want to pick up the rows to the foam. That's all you gotta do. And then you've you've got them. 
this is a way of doing it if you're scared to pick them up. Another piece of foam on top. My cells are in there. I've just taped it. So I can continue tapping cells and stringing cells and then I'll just keep putting them away until I want to build my right, pan. So what we're going to do is we're going to lay out our rolls. So our next row, we're going to put, a, instead of a negative, we want a positive here. Part again. So we want enough room for the silicone to go around the perimeter. All right, so we have them all spaced out. We want to secure them down now. We're going to use some aluminum tape to secure them all down so they don't move around when we go to join them together. We want to cut some squares of aluminum foil, and then we can just stick it down. This is the way I've been doing it. Our spacing we want, and then we can just stick it down. You could start with one piece per... So what we can do is we connect these rows together in a series circuit. Now I don't have any bus bar wire, so I'm just going to use a couple pieces of tabbing wire. Just double up two pieces. That'll carry enough current. On this side here, we're just going to join these two. We'll have a positive here and a negative here. So the current is going to then flow down here, around. It's gonna go around, and then around, and out. Our voltage meter now, and we're gonna test the voltage of the panel here. This is negative, positive. There, 12.8 volts. So we're going to put our leads on now. That's the lead in here, so we want to put the tape. This is my last piece of bus bar wire. Now you want to use the bus bar wire for your lead because you want it nice and thick coming out of the panel. You don't want a thin piece. So all we need is a small piece to come out and wrap around under the glass. All right, it's just got to do the other side and we're good. done with all the soldering and wiring. All we got to do is put the glass on now. Right, so we're going to put a couple globs of either tile spacers or whatever you want, but I'm just going to use some hot glue. One thing I don't talk about is this tube. Now I add a tube to the panel and this is a vent tube. It's just a piece of uh, wire casing from telephone wire. And what I do is I just put that in the panel to vent the panel. So, and then I can just wrap this, this piece of tubing around the back of the panel and, and tape it. So what I do is I fix it to the glass before the silicone and then that'll, that'll, hold against the silicone vapors maybe it's good to vent them I think I did a little bit of research years ago in the silicone it can attack the cells so it's good to probably vent them I've been doing that for a while and they're nice and dry inside so I think the vent is a good idea so we're ready to put the other piece of glass on top we just got to get our silicone ready get this glass on the bead along close to the edge and that's all you got to do Try to get it 
as perfect as possible without moving it. Dip your hands in the silicone a bit. So to hook up the panel now, just hooked up some wire directly to the panel. I've connected a Dean's plug to it, and there's my diode. Because I can just plug in whatever I want into the Dean's plug. So there's our voltage coming out of the panel. There's enough voltage there to charge with. Um, you'd want it a little higher, at least 13 and a half, 14 and a half volts would be better. But right now, we don't have to worry about that, because what we can do is we can just boost the voltage a little bit up to what we want. So I have a boost module here. I've just connected a Dean's plug to it directly to the, the board made it simple. Just by turning this little screw here, you can turn up your, your voltage or turn it down. We can put the boost module at 14 and a half volts. So I have a 12 volt battery here. We can just clip right on. Let's 12.95. The battery's completely charged. We put this on here. Yeah. So now we're creeping up 14.5. Boost module is getting warm. We don't want to put that much voltage this boost module is pretty small. You can only get about two amps out of it. So I wouldn't recommend using this to charge batteries off of a panel that's actually 65 watts because the current is going to be more than this can handle. But we can connect our solar panel to a charge controller like this one here. So this charge controller here is a little big for that panel. So this panel here, you don't really need anything more than a 10 amp controller. Even a seven amp controller would work or less. 